Hi, this video is going to be looking at phase and how to convert different types of signal to phase and uh, generally how to troubleshoot math in the grid. And uh, for the practical example, I'm going to be showing you how you can uh, convert key tracking to slicing up a sample by beat divisions. And uh, I decided to make this video because um, I was helping a friend out the other day with the grid and he was having some difficulty understanding how phase worked and the relationship with timing and then also kind of how I would like how I would, would figure out what numbers to use in different math situations in the grid. So I kind of wanted to just make a video sort of aimed at beginners in the grid on how you would like use value readouts and stuff to troubleshoot things and figure out what kind of math to use. And yeah, I, I decided to start making some videos that are maybe a little bit more basic than just look at kind of like a basic functionality in the grid without getting into super long patches because you know I've gotten some feedback that some of my videos are just a bit too long and people lose patience with them so yeah so I'm going to show you here how you can convert keyboard range to slicing up a sample and this can kind of be the beginning of later on leading to making more complex patches like um, if anybody's seen any of my videos I've been working on for a while various ways of getting manual samplers to work in the grid and uh, you know this would be sort of the first steps in building a project like that so like you know eventually getting something like this oh this has time stretching on but so that's a you know classic champ break and you know these kind of things because of a lot of the cool features of the grid I, you know I could make this be a whole crazy sam glitch, glitch sampler you know like here I have stutters Time stretching. So yeah, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get anything too fancy here. Let's just start with what would be the first step of just slicing by beat division. So I'm not gonna do loop mode. I'm not gonna do manual slicing, but just how 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 would you figure out how to convert the keyboard range? So I mean, you might think to start with the um, key track, but uh, in this situation, I'm not gonna use it because I want to have exact values from my keyboard, and I want to be able to slice. I want to be able to slice at different um, divisions. So what I would do to figure figure that out is first get a pitch. And actually before I even before I even do this, let me just give you a quick overview of some of like how phase works in here because um some people who are coming to the grid from like using Eurorack or using something like reactor blocks or ReCV rack uh might get a little confused about how phase works with timing. Because, you know, in, in all those other kinds of systems, you know, you have you have your, like, clock, which is, you know, a repeating gate, which is what gives you the time. A bit, a bit like it's a little bit different. That time works like phase, just like any other kind of phase, just like the phase of a waveform. And the, in the same ways that you can modify the phase of a waveform, you can modify time. Because time can essentially be thought of in the grid as a ramp. So, like, a saw wave going from zero to one over, a, you know, a certain set of time. And so, like... Like, for example, let me show you. If we get this, it's under the LFO section, the transport. I can look at it in an oscilloscope, and you can see. I'm going to turn this off so we don't hear it. So we can see that this, and if I put, let's say, a reset after here, it's going to start at the same point every time. So every time I start, it's going from zero to one and so like let's say I use this to um, drive a basic sequencer over here all right here let me use something we can see a little easier let's make this like blue so we can see it well all right so this will drive this sequencer let me increase the step so you can see this well so if we go for example up to phase there's all these different modifiers that could be used for say like making kind of weird warp warping oscillators and you know for manipulating oscillators but you can also use them for manipulating time so you can see like if I take this sign mod you can see what it's going to do to this waveform and actually if I put that now let me instead put this after so you can see clearly what this is doing and then see what it's doing to here.
And you can see just with any one of these. So yeah, that's how the timing works in Bitwig. It's zero, it's zero to one, and it's the same. <coughs> it's basically the same thing as waveform, except you know most of the waveforms are going to be bi bipolar, so they're actually going to be like negative 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 or negative one and mi minus one, depending on like what you're doing. But yeah, that's kind of how phase relates to timing in Bitwig. So for a sample, the sample is zero to one. So if I want to slice this, let's say I want C1 to be the first note, then I can, I'm going to put a value readout in here. You can see I'm hitting, all right, let's start at C0. I'm hitting C0. If we put this back into number, you can see that C0 is negative 0.3. So, so to begin with, I want that to be zero. So I'm going to add 0.3. And so I hope this kind of like demonstrates just the beginnings of how you would figure out what numbers. Cause it's like, sometimes, you know, people look at my patches and they just don't understand what, where I got all these numbers from. And a lot of the time it's just starting with basic stuff like this. And then often you, when you start with these kind of basic things, you start finding numerical patterns and, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times these things start making sense. But so let's say now, so what I want to do is I want to have multiple division rates. Let's start with 16. So what I'm going to do is just count the keys on my keyboard so that the 17th step will be 100%. So it, it basically triggers back. So if I count on my keyboard, all right, the 17th step is E1. So I want that to be the end of the of the um the end of of the sample. So if I click E1, if I hit E1 on my on my keyboard which you can see over here. Why is, it, why is it showing E4? Oh, because there's that plus. Don't worry about that. But if I hit E1 right now, it's showing this value. So if I want to make that one, and I don't know what number to use, again, I can just look at the value readout, put a number in here, and then just kind of push this until it says one. And you can see it got it at 7.5. And it's a funny thing because like there's some of these numbers that you end up popping it like finding multiple places in the grid like 7.5 if anybody saw my video about how to figure out hold time i did a video when uh showing like these samplers that i do how how to figure out how to convert the sample size in a slicer to the hold time because there wasn't really clear um a clear uh relation and so I ended up making this whole array that divides 75. So you're basically, you know, it, it, I think it was actually dividing, what is it, 1,000 by 75. But either way, you can see 75, 7.5, these things were repeating. And it was a whole iterative process, but it ended up getting me my hold time. And the whole purpose of that, you can see, is that you can see in my slice mode in here, it works. It works in in loop mode, but I want, when I change the pitch, for example, and speed, or time stretch, um, I want these things to always end right before the, uh, right before this, the uh, loop ends. Some of these are actually slightly, slightly off because this is a bit of an older version of this patch. Um, it's something I've been working on a while, but you can see that, that basically, for the most part, this one works. But yeah, it's not a hundred. It's not a hundred percent accurate. But um, but that yeah, I wanted to determine what's the relationship of this to hold time. So it was the same thing of kind of creating a math setup like that, which again I explain in another video. So I'm not going to spend too long on that. But okay, so now this is that was a bit of a sidetrack. So now if we assign this over here to the play. Oh, let me turn this back on.
obviously, like I said, I'm not dealing with the loop length or all that right now. I'm just dealing with the sample start because I don't want this video to be too complicated. I just want to show you more how you figure out different numbers. And then, so let's say now we wanted to expand this to where we can have an a few different options. So like, let's say I want to be able to subdivide it by four, by eight, by 16, or by 32. Um, what we could do now would be get a merge, put it here, let's create four. So 16 is going to be the third. And then I can um, just figure out now in the same way as we did that one, the numbers for these other subdivisions. So let's say we wanted to subdivide it by four, then the fifth step would be 100%. So we would have C0, C sharp, D. So E0 would be the first. So basically if I hit E0 now, I want this to be at a, at a one. So I would have to um, move this up until it says one and you can see it's 30 so you can see generally things end up making sense mathematically like it's rare well, it's not rare but a lot of times you'll see with things like this that once you start playing with them you'll actually find mathematical systems that work and that was in the same thing like i was showing you in this patch over here it was the same exact thing like this whole time started off with me doing the exact same thing until i found a pattern that actually worked and i was able to create this whole array but I wouldn't have known how to do this, you know, beginning with it, if I didn't start by just feeding numbers in there and seeing how they affect the whole time. And that was something I, like, again, I demonstrated on, like, my second or third video about sample slicing. I have a video about how to get whole time. But so, yeah, so now this could be called division. And then... Uh, I'll just do, I'll do one more. We'll do eight and then um, I'll cut this video uh, so it doesn't, doesn't go on too long. So let's see, for eight, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it looks like G sharp would be where it should be 100%. So now I'll just move this up again like we did with the other one till it says 100%. I'm guessing it's going to be at 15 because... It looks like these are doubling. Yeah, and so you can see already now we see that there's a pattern. 15 divided by 2 is 15. 30 divided by 2 is 15. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So this should basically be uh, what 3.75, I'm guessing. Three point seventy five. We can guess now would be 32. So let me just count. Thirty-two. I think if I counted right, should be a G. So let me put this all the way here. Wait. Oh, okay. I must have counted wrong. Okay. The thirty-second step I think is there. So you can see once I hit G sharp, it gives me this. So you can see, you know, often start just starting with you looking at a uh, at a value readout, playing with numbers. You can kind of figure out what it what is the math that go, needs to go into something. So so it's like with this now that I have this pattern. There's a much simpler ways, you know, to set this kind of thing up. And let's say if I want to have, you know, just increase this, I could just have like an iterative process of multiplying or dividing by two and going, going up and down. I don't have to keep repeating this process because now we see the pattern. So you can see now we have, we have all these things working for, um, for slicing this up. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to let the video go there. So basically, yeah, I just kind of want to show what are sort of some of the very basic ways you can figure out math problems and figure out patterns and how, you know, in this case, how to convert a signal to another. But yeah, it's more about just kind of how you can troubleshoot things in the grid. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Bye.